Today, we will embark on a voyage of discovery to explore one of the ocean's most mysterious and overlooked group of mollusks, the selenogasters. These strange worm-like animals can be found in oceans around the world, but many people don't even know they exist. Today, we will take a look at these obscure creatures, and you may be surprised by the specialized lives that they live. Our expedition to the frigid waters of eastern Antarctica has introduced us to a stunning array of unique marine invertebrates. However, the main goal of our expedition is actually to find one specific group, the selenogasters. There are about 300 described species of selenogasters, but that represents just a tiny fraction of the actual diversity of these animals. This means there is an exciting amount of discovery to be made in this group. They were the most poorly understood groups of mollusks, but we were hoping to fix that. Selenogasters don't have the shells which are common among many other mollusks. Instead, they're covered in tiny scales or spines called sclerites. Like shells, these sclerites are made of calcium carbonate, making them very hard. They can come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but they are very small, making it difficult to see them with the naked eye. If we take a look at a selenogaster using a scanning electron microscope, we can get a better idea of what these scales and spines can look like. From sharp barbs to dragon-like scales, we don't yet understand why selenogasters have such a wide variety of sclerites. After weeks of travel, we finally encounter our first Antarctic selenogaster. This is a Neomenia megatrapezata. The Neomenia moves across the ocean floor on a very reduced foot. At the front of the foot is a small pink disc called the pedal pit. This pit is dense in mucus secreting cells. This mucus creates a slicker surface for it to crawl across. They then use small, hair-like structures called cilia that vibrate back and forth, moving them forward. The front of the selenogaster has a large opening called an atrium. This atrium is lined with sensitive papillae that it uses to taste the water. You may be wondering, what is the selenogaster looking for? Well, these animals may not appear intimidating to you or me, but they are actually specialized predators. This neomenia flexes its atrium, smelling the water column, hoping to get a taste of its favorite food, anemones. This animal seems to have smelled something and takes off in search of its prey. It leaves a small trail in its wake. At the tail end of the animal is an opening called the mantle cavity. This is where the selenogaster secretes its waste. Strangely, this is also the same opening that they use to breathe. Weird. The selenogaster seems close to finding its prey. The anemones that they hunt will pull their bodies beneath the sand when they detect danger. That's no problem for this neomenia as it pushes its head into the sand and begins to burrow. In slow, shoveling motions, it digs deeper and deeper in search of the anemone. While neomenia live very active, predatory lives, some other selenogasters take a more relaxed approach to carnivory. This is Entonomenia tricarinata. The Antonomenia's long slender body wraps tightly around the trunk of a branching hydrozoan colony. This Antonomenia will move slowly around the colony, leisurely grazing on polyps. Other species employ similar feeding strategies, feeding on anything from these hydrozoans to branching corals, with many believed to be very specialized feeding on just one specific species. During our expedition to Antarctica, we uncovered many amazing selenogaster species, including some that are new to science. These weird animals remain a mystery to us, but we are working hard to answer all the questions revolving around them. If you enjoyed learning about selenogasters, please subscribe to join us as we continue our voyage discovering many strange invertebrates of the Southern Ocean.